when I say my 25th Glastonbury, what I mean is I've performed at every single festival there's been since 1983. Wow. Um, so, you know, obviously that means I've done 25 actual festivals. Um, you know, obviously there's been some years off. Yeah. My first, yeah, my first one was 1983. I remember it extremely well for one prim primary reason, which was that I'd never seen a load of people walking around naked in the field before. Um and um you know at a festival and and it was really hot so i thought well i'll do that and i'd done my set and and i was feeling really kind of chilled out because i'd done a really good set and it, I, I remember i went on just after um the, the great late um rick mail doing kevin turvey in the old cabaret tent yeah uh, and um so i went on I, I sort of finished my set and i got this scrumpy i've never really had proper scrumpy before and i drank loads of it and i thought i was feeling really sleepy um <laughs> And, um, and I thought, well, everyone else isn't. There's loads of people wandering around in the nude, you know. I, just, I mean, I, I, I think I just get take my clothes off and go for a sleep. So I lay in the, I took my clothes off and lay in the sun on my back. Okay, I fell asleep. Now, about two hours later, see the, the late great Seething Wells, um, ranting poet who died sadly a few years ago, um, woke me up by shouting, "You're burning up, mate!" and throwing a bucket of water over me. And <laughs> I woke up. And realised that I was extremely sunburnt, and that certain bits of me, which would never ever get sunburnt, were 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 exceed. My my poor looked like a little shriveled up lugworm. It was just unbelievable. Um, and I was. I, I do hope it's fully recovered by now. Oh yeah, I was completely. It was completely. I was completely red. So I was, uh, you know, red in a way that I never wanted to be. I've always been red in another way. I'm very proud of that. But you know, and so yeah, so um, so I was curled up in misery. Churchill spotted me. And she said, oh, I tell you, you look terrible. Do you want some cream? <laughs> <laughs> so Arabella, um, Arabella sort of took me back to her tent and gave me some cream to put on my sore bits. I mean, in, in the most platonic way possible. Um, and it was great. And, I, I, and I, yeah, I recovered. I mean, I drank a lot more scrumpy and, and stuff and, um, and cured everything really to a degree. Um, but I've never, ever done it again. I tell you, I never would do that again. Christ, no way. <laughs> so, <are> we... <laughs> yeah, there seems to be less nudity these days, doesn't it? Now, yeah, I mean, it's funny, because as I say, I've, you, have, you, have you seen the poem that I wrote? No, I haven't, no. Okay, the... I'll do the poem right now. Mm. It sums it all up. It's called Two Glastonbury Errors, and it's dedicated to the memory of Arabella Churchill. Now, I've performed at Glastonbury since 1983. 25 festivals this year, though each feels new to me. I've seen it grow from hippie roots into a massive splurge, a massive celebration where the old and new converge, and that's okay, each to their own. Us old school hardcore purists and all the mobile cash point weekend hippie glasto tourists. I have a thousand memories of sunshine, rain and flood. Joe Strummer on the main stage, John Peel in the mud. No time for all. Two special stories and a rare old mixture. The beer befuddled memoirs of a punk rock glasto fixture. The first concerns a gruesome an apocryphal event concerning those unfortunates ensconced in the dance tent one afternoon when Glasto's staff were cleaning out the loos. The bloke inside the toilet truck had two buttons to choose, the one in blazon suck and the other labelled blow. Wrong button, wrong place and wrong time. The end result? Oh no. The second is more personal and close to home, I'd say. My wife and I were wandering one sunny Saturday amidst the closed pressed masses of a modern Glasto crowd when she had a whim to do something to make her husband proud, give me a lift, despite my beers, and really set me up. So she gently reached behind herself to make a loving cup. But my stopping by the beer tent quite undid her wifely plan, and the loving cup was given to an unsuspecting man. Her fingers knew at once the heinous nature of her error, and she dashed off in embarrassment, confusion, pain, and terror. I've never asked Rabina if the grounds for her surprise well, because her chosen target was over or undersized, or was it just a different shape? Well, that's as it may be. Long live Michael Evis and long live Glastonbury. <laughs> this is the great thing about Glastonbury. I mean, I, I've seen it develop and grow from, not, not the beginning, obviously, but since, from not that far off the beginning into what it is now. And, and the, the really good thing for me is that, yes, everybody says, you know, the main criticism you hear these days, oh, it's too commercial, it's sold out on its original ideals. I don't think that's true at all. Obviously, it's more expensive and all the rest of it. And obviously, it's become, you know, parts of it are now more a sort of conventional kind of rock festival, you know. But there's loads of the original spirit still there. I'm opening the tent on the Friday, and then on the Saturday, myself and my mate John Otway are doing our double act just before John Cooper Clark in the cabaret tent as well. So that's going to be fun, because obviously we work together and we do... I mean, one of the things we do is we translate you ain't seen nothing yet into German. I mean, that's <laughs> to us not mixed I mean, 
It's, uh, and then on the Sunday, I'm, I'm doing poetry and words. Um, right. Poetry and words 10 as well. So.